I'm Francine Lacqua, and I'm delighted to be joined by Vera Davies de Souza, the Finance Minister of Angola, to talk about the country and, of course, the prospects for the future. So, Minister, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here with you, Francine. Uh, Minister, the government um, is planning to ask for a new IMF program once the current program ends at the end of the year. Is that so? Uh, Francine, we are, we are um, evaluating our options. We are discussing with the IMF team uh, and uh, within the government which options we, we have after uh, this program to end. We are uh, looking to the pros and cons of moving with a, with a program or uh, only on, with technical assistance or only with the surveillance under the Article 4. We are, evalu we are evaluating all these options, and before the end of the year, we will, be, we will have a clear vision uh, of which way we will uh, follow. So, Minister, how will you actually decide? Is there a certain criteria? Is it a matter of how, you know, how expensive or how, how cheap it will be, or is it other factors taken into account? It's more a matter of which solutions match better with our actual needs. We will we are evaluating what are our circumstances now and which uh, shape of cooperation because we still want to work together with IMF is a matter to understand which kind of engagement do we will have. Minister, what is the government's growth forecast for 2021? We we are expecting a stagnation, uh, zero growth. Uh, but we wa we are seeing the oil productions uh, performing worse than that we are expecting. So um, let's see if we if we will have a recession again. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> at the best scenario, a stagnation. At the worst scenario, scenario a slight uh, negative growth. Do you expect the recent increase in oil prices to have a positive impact on spending, though, and overall economic growth in Angola? Uh, the two effects um, work together: the increase on the oil production and the decrease on the, the increase on oil price and the decrease in oil production. Let's see how they will work together and what will be the the final result of it uh, in the growth. Uh, regarding the expenditures, we need to keep being as more conservative as possible uh, to to create a buffer. But for sure, we need only also to to take care of buying vaccines is something that we need to expand to to expand some money, and also make sure that the projects that are uh, near to to an end that we are able to pay them to to have these infrastructures available to our population. Those are our three main goals regarding a, 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 a potential uh, uh, buffer that we will create with the difference in between the oil price. What are you expecting in the price of oil going forward? At the moment, we see huge energy price surges across the world. This could be also, you know, lead to some kind of economic shock. We, you know, from where you're looking at it, what does it look like? Uh, this this market this so volatile is so volatile that uh, is is difficult to foreseeing foreseeing a, a, a movement, uh, but we are seeing a lot of advanced advanced economies uh, with high rates of vaccination, the, the economies to to start starting to recover. So probably we will see uh, um, a, a market where the price will. Uh, keep a, traje a trajectory that it's it's not so so uh, low, uh, but uh, a price above six or seventy um, dollars per barrel probably is something that it's it's not impossible. But uh, I don't think that this movement of uh, high prices will will take uh, so long. So for the countries that are oil producers that they need to keep their focus and still being conservatives uh, despite this 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 
high movements that we are seeing because I really do not believe that we will see uh, a, a price for so many times uh, higher than $80 per barrel. So we need to do our maths counting on uh, a more conservative right. price. And this, this is what Angola intend to do um, because we already start preparing our budgets for 2022 and we will be as more conservative as possible defining the, the oil price that we will use as reference for our budget. Minister Moody's also on September 13th raised its rating for Angola for the first time since 2015, citing improved governance and prompting the nation's euro bonds to surge and yields to drop. Given the improved outlook and lower funding costs, are you considering selling euro bonds this year or in 2022? Uh that was that that was great news for us we 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 are truly um, happy with that we saw we saw the results of the hard work <laughs> that we are doing regarding the the, ref the the structural reforms that we are implementing regarding the, the proactive debt management that we are putting in place the fiscal consolidation the free float regime on the exchange rate so we did it all, we did it a lot uh, in in very difficult circumstances, uh, so we we are happy that Moody's recognized all this package of of reforms and measures, upgrading our rating. For sure, we are evaluating uh, the 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 best moment to to move on and to issue euro bonds is something that was out of our agenda. But with mm -hmm. this uh, in short term, <laughs> out of our agenda in, in the short term, but uh, with this upgrade, we are now looking again uh, to it mm -hmm. uh, to to uh, to understand the best moment to to go to the market in the short term. So it's something yes that we are evaluating. And at this point, do you think that it would make more more sense this year or to wait a bit? It's the decision that we need to 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 to, to take, and we we will also ask the opinion of the, the IMF because we have the program till the end of the year, and we we will ask them their opinion about the best moment to go, if even this year or, or only the next year. So we are discussing internally, and uh, we we will also count on the technical assistance of IMF regarding this matter. Do you know the size of how much you want to sell already? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we, we will depend on our uh, fiscal space. We, we do not want to do something that is more than uh, that our ability to, to still being totally um, confident about our debt sustainability. Uh, so we will consider also this uh, and probably because of this, next year would be better than this year. But we are analyzing, and we we will uh, decide this as as soon as possible. Uh, Minister, but you're confident that there's enough demand for these kind of products. And again, does it make a difference if there's a second IMF program attached to it, or you know, as long as there are guarantees or something like that, you think appetite for those products will be the same? Uh, for sure, the the markets and and the international community uh, will always be more uh, confident if they know that we're still working with IMF. It's a fact. This is a fact, and we are aware of it. Uh, because of this, because of this, we want to keep working with IMF. Not only because we want to to attract the interest and the the. the the interest of the potential investors, but because we uh, truly believe that the, the working the, with the IMF, the cooperation with them, is really useful, and we are seeing the, re the results and the effects of it in our uh, macroeconomic indicators. So it, it's our own interest to, to keep working with them. Uh, what we need to define now is how we will work together. And for sure, uh, at the end of the day, the reflex would be 
in our own economy and uh, our figures, our numbers and our performance will talk to itself and the international markets will, we will, will understand that we're still committed to get the best performance as possible in our economy. Minister, Angola has also uh, been carrying out very ambitious privatization uh, program that includes the sale of stakes in some of the country's actually biggest companies, including state-owned oil company, Sonangol, the diamond company, and Diama. Has this privatization program so far succeeded in attracting foreign investors to Angola? Uh, yes, um, more local than, than foreigners. Uh, but we we are seeing a lot of uh, international interest, especially when we are talking about um, inviting the investors to uh, for to to manage the assets. Uh, regarding buying the assets, we are getting less interest. But when the contract the contract is to manage uh, an asset for uh, the, uh, a period of time with the option of buying it off after this period, we are getting a lot of interest coming from abroad. Uh, so we already uh, privatized 41 assets. Uh, so we, we, we are happy. Uh, for sure, we could do more, but we are doing it in a moment where uh, all the economies are start recovering. So. We are not seeing so much liquidity. Uh, and doing this through this moment, I think it's, it's quite remarkable. We still 90, 97 assets to, to sell or to, to contract hired management, and we intend to, to do it in the, the next one to two years. Uh, and we, are, we, we really expect that with the international recovery of the economies with more people be, get, being vaccinated and with this upgrade also from Moody's, this is something that also counts regarding uh, the interest and the confident of, confidence of the investors. Probably we will see more offers coming and also the price, mm -hmm. uh, the final price of selling those assets uh, being more, more positive for us. Are there any concrete examples, maybe, of foreign companies interested in potentially investing in Angola? Uh, yes, we 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 saw it. We saw it on some 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 farms. We saw interest coming from Latin America, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, a Latin America entity buy uh, a farm to to to, to explore. We saw interest coming from uh, South Africa for a, for a, a local bank, uh, and a, a, a bank that was uh, totally state-owned, and uh, is something that is moving. We we didn't saw the final result yet. So it was a public tender, um, and we saw also interest coming from Europe for an insurance company. Uh, the, the, the process was not, was not finalized yet for a, 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 a huge uh, supermarket with different stores. We saw also interest coming from Europe. So yes, we are seeing some good examples, um, and uh, let's see if the final result would be good for both parts. Angola is also scheduled to hold general elections next year. The current president is expected to run. So is the government preparing a uh, minister to announce big spending projects ahead of the election, as has been the case with previous elections in 2017 and 2008? Uh, we, Angola is huge, and we have a, a huge lack of infrastructures. Uh, it's We are always trying to do to do as most as possible, as quicker as possible. Of course, we, we can do uh, much more when we have uh, fiscal limits, we, when we have lo uh, small revenues, when we have small capacity of get uh, more debt. So it's, it's not easy to see people uh, needing to get access to electricity, to water, to roads, and we 
we, and we are not being able to provide this. So it's not it's not an easy task. Um, so as soon as we see the financial condition improving, uh, we try to do more. If the financial conditions do not uh, permit us to do so, we need to do less. So it's, it's a matter of, of money available to do the infrastructures and not really a matter of elections, in my perspective. Uh, so with the oil price uh, increasing, let's see what what will be possible to do next next year. If we see a movement against us, we will need to shrink the budget, and that uh, would be the reality that we need to to deal with. But is there a risk? Or do you perceive a risk that these elections can actually derail your ability, the finance ministry's ability to continue to cut spending and repay debt to creditors? Uh, it's that's always a pressure. As Minister of Finance, uh, I used to say that I uh, I'm not properly the most uh, 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 how I say in a in a good and in a good way. I'm the no woman. <laughs> 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 I'm You're, the no woman. You keep the purse strings. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to say no all the time. So I need to to manage this. The balance in between get things done and the importance of also protects our 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 uh, indicators and uh, avoid the fiscal deficits so i'm always uh, managing th that pressure coming from all over the places i will keep doing my best <laughs> to to defend uh, our budget our fiscal accounts the pressure will never end as I mentioned, the, the country is huge, and that's a lot of needs, a lot of expectations. Uh, the, the, the Angolan people are waiting for so many years for getting uh, the best uh, access to, to, to social um, services. So it's not easy to resist. Each day is a difficult day uh, to move uh, with the velocity that do not harm uh, too much our account. I, I will keep doing my part and, and that God help me <laughs> through this part. Minister, finally, when you look at the pandemic or last 18 months, what do you need from the world economy now to make your job a little bit easier? Is it getting better or are we still really in the middle of the storm? Uh, we're still in the middle of of the storm because we we are not being able to vaccine to vaccinate the people as quicker as we we should um, because of a lot of factors. But the 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 first one and the most important one is the um, the access to vaccines. It's it's quite hard to, to to have access to them to buy them in in quantity that it's uh, good enough big enough for our population and, and also at a good price. So it's a difficult equation, but we'll keep seeking it. We will keep knocking all the doors uh, to get uh, that access uh, to, to the best price as possible. Uh, and while this do not happen, we will need to manage with the measures to sometimes uh, close more the economy and 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 close some ask to close some services the tourism is suffering a lot uh, because of that but we need to do it to, to avoid that we save as as much life, lives as possible <laughs>